the knowledge concerning the sons of God. Who are the sons of God? Because there is a great lack concerning these, there's a great lack of knowledge concerning these sons of God. The world is overtaken by wicked men and demonic forces and nobody is there to check them to cast them away and to cause quietness instead of oppression and fanatism to bring peaceable life instead of robbery bandits and terrorism and bring godliness instead of satanicness we craft in this and honesty instead of corruption and more practices that are happening on earth today because the sons of God are the one who are to bring God peace the quietness that the earth require the peaceable life everybody can go about their activities in peace nobody will be under any oppression from any country or for any ruler there will be honesty life and godliness that is what apostle paul told the sons to supplicate pray intercede and give thanks to god for in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, the apostles said, I as taught, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made by all people. For those in, for kings and those in authority, that we may have quiet, peaceable life, godliness, and honesty. For this is acceptable in the sight of God, who wants all to be safe and to count the knowledge of the truth. God require, God will, God pressure is that there will be quietness on earth, there will be peaceable life on earth, there will be godliness on earth, there will be honesty on earth, so that everybody will come to the knowledge of the truth and be safe. When people are poor, when they are oppressed, they have no peace in life. And peace is not only absent of security, it is also absent of poverty, sicknesses, and oppression. That's peace. That's how peace is defined. They shouldn't be poor people. They shouldn't be oppressed people. They shouldn't be people under threats, security threats. They shouldn't be people who don't have food to eat. If somebody is poor, doesn't have peace, food to eat, the person doesn't have peace. So peace is not only the absence of security, it is also the absence of poverty and food security, financial security, and life security. Not only threat of war or destruction, but also the threat of poverty, hunger, diseases and sicknesses this is what peace is defined and jesus said those who be called these peacemakers are the ones who be called the sons of god matthew chapter 5 verse 9 says, blessed blessed are the peacemakers they shall be called children of god are children there the greek word is heos and heos means sons not children. Go the Greek word children, the word used for children in Greek is nepios. But the word in Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, if you're reading King James, other translations say sons of God, but King James say children of God. But that word in Greek is heos, sons of God. So who are the sons of God? We know that the only begotten son of God was Jesus Christ. The reason why he was the only begotten son when he came on the earth is that today 
He is the third born among many brethren. Because Romans 8 verse 17 says that if they are children that are the sons of God, then they are heirs and join here with Christ. Verse 29, for God predestinated that these will conform to the image of his son, being the third born among many brethren. Then Hebrews, uh, Romans 8, verse 17, 20, and then Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10 and 11 says, It behoove him who are, do bring all things to bring many sons into glory through his suffering. And because we who he has sanctified to become sons of God, and he who sanctified us are the same, so he is not ashamed to call them brethren. So today, as we are speaking, we have many sons of God, not only a begotten son of God. There are many sons of God. Galatians 3, verse 26 to 28, Galatians 3, verse 26 to 28 says that, For you are all that were there to hear, sons of God, through faith in Jesus Christ. In other words, everybody who says Jesus is Christ is the Son of God. That is exactly what 1 John chapter 5 verse 1 is teaching. 1 John chapter 5 verse 1 says, Whosoever believes that Jesus is Christ is born of God. Verse 4 to 6 says, This is the victory that overcomes the world. That's their faith. The faith that Jesus is the Son of God. So, when somebody believes that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, the person has become the Son of God, not a child of God. The Son of God. Galatians chapter 4, from verse 1 to 7 says, Galatians chapter 4, from verse 1 to 7 says, when one is a child, even though he's a heir, he's not different from a servant, but he's under tutors and governors. So when we were children, we were also under bondage. But when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son made of a woman, that's the only begotten son, made of a woman born under the law to redeem them who were under the law that they might receive adoption of sons. Therefore, you are no more a servant or a child. But a son, and if a son, then you are here of God through Christ. So we have sons of God on earth, and these are people who believe that Jesus is the Christ, or people who call themselves Christians. That great thing, chapter 3, verse 26 to 28 says, You are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For as many of you have been baptized in Christ, have been put on Christ. There is neither born or free, neither Jew or Greek, born or free, or male or female, for you are all one. So, when somebody is a son of God, it doesn't mean whether he's a man or woman, a girl or boy. Once he believes that Jesus is Christ, the Son of the living God, that person is a son of God. It is the spirit of the Son of God in that person that makes him or her the Son of God, not his physical appearance, and physical sexual appearance. It's the spirit. We have received the spirit of the Son of God, which cried out by Father in earth. So that spirit makes us sons of God, male or female. So when you hear the Son of God, don't just put children or daughters there. The word is Son of God. It's referring to the Spirit of Christ in you. When the Spirit of Christ in you, you have become the Son of God. It doesn't matter whether you are a woman or a girl. You are the Son of God. You are defined by the Spirit in you. You are a new creature. We are defined by the Spirit of Christ in you not by your original birth in the flesh, but defined by your new birth. John chapter 1, verse 12 and 13 says, John chapter 1, verse 12 and 13 says, As many as receive Christ,
Christ. Him, he gave them the power to become the sons of God. Even though who believe is no, they which, which were not born of flesh or blood of man, but of God. So you become the son of God when you receive Christ as your life, as your spirit. And this is what you need to know when you are the son of God, a man or woman. The son of God is greater than any person born by a woman. Matthew chapter 11 verse 11. John the Baptist, Jesus described him as the greatest of all born by woman. But he said the least in the kingdom of God. Because the sons of God are the heirs of the kingdom of God. He said the least, the least, the bottom son of God. The, the son of God who is at the bottom is greater than the greatest one born by woman. 1 John chapter 4 verse 1 to 4 describe about our spirits and talk about the spirit of Antichrist. This spirit is called the beast. Revelation 13 verse 1 to 2 define this beast. Verse 4, Revelation 13 says, Satan, he rule over everything. Satan has given his power even to this beast. This beast is the one described as the Antichrist. And 1 John chapter 4, from verse 1 to 4, especially verse 4, is saying that the little children has overcome them, these spirits, including the spirit of the Antichrist. The little children, that word children there is not even yours, it's technon. Technon, somebody born by a parent. Technon. The little technon, not even the little heroes, have overcome them. They who are in the world, who are they? Revelation 16, verse 13 and 14 says that Apostle John is saying, I saw three spirits coming into the world to deceive the world. He said they are the spirits that come from the mouth of the dragon, the dragon Satan. Revelation 12, 9 describes the dragon as Satan, the old serpent, who is the devil, who deceived the whole world. He said, I saw three spirits coming from the mouth of the dragon and the mouth of the beast. The beast is the Antichrist. And the mouth of the false prophets, these false ministers in the church. And they came into the world to perform miracles to deceive people. And Apostle John, who saw them, is saying in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 to 4, that test them. Look at what they are preaching you. Jesus came into the flesh to make you the Son of God. If they are denying that, they are Antichrist. By the little children, you have overcome them. For greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Greater, little ones, the little children. These are the sons of God. Now, let me compare the son of God to occult person who has a satanic spirit or antichrist spirit of a false prophet spirit in them. They are called occult in some traditions and cultures. They call them medicine men or the fetish priests. These are very terrible people who can just kill without touching any person. If they are passing by and you happen to unfortunately offend them, that will be the end of you. A day will not pass you still alive. They are very terrible and very fearful. In some communities, when they hear the medicine man's name, when it's passing by, you see destruction. They cause destructions. And some people even go to them for, med for money medicine. If you want to make money, you go to them. They can make you rich. They can cause money to come into your hands. These medicine men or these awkward people, they're called grandmasters on the awkward world. Awkward grandmasters. Or satanic, sa the satanic masters, or the demons. They are controlled by demons. Some of them, if you shoot them with a gun, they will not even die. And when we find them in politics, leading nations, you see destructions they cause, killings, and nobody dare touch them. This is how fearful, how frightening, and how terrible and dangerous these 
occult men who are using the spirit of Satan, the spirit of Antichrist, the spirit of false prophet are. And they are human beings like you. But so compare them. But John is saying that the little one has even overcome them, has overcome these demonized beings, these evil and wicked rulers, these awkward grandmasters. The little children have overcome them. For greater is he who is in them than he who is in them. Greater is he who is in the little children of God than those who which is in these grand masters and occult men and occult women with Christ spirit and those demonic principalities, powers, these rulers or darkness of this world and these wicked spirits in high places. The little children have overcome them because they have greater. The spirit in them, the spirit of Christ and the spirit of God. Jesus said in John 17 verse 23, John 17, 23, to Father, in the prayer, I am in them, and you are in me. So in Romans 8, verse 11, and 10, verse 10, 11, 11 Romans 8, verse 10, 11 says, If Christ be in you, and if the spirit of him who will Christ be in you, so there's a spirit of Christ in you, and the spirit of him who will Christ from the dead also in you. That the spirit of God the Father. That makes you greater than these court grand masters and people with this demon spirit and witchcraft spirit. And look at how this occult and this witchcraft power engineer person could do. They can catapult themselves, they can transport themselves even from place to place without them even moving with their physical body or traveling with aircraft or whatever without having to travel with plane ticket, they don't need visa. They can appear in place. I have, people have told me how some medicine man in the continent of Africa has appeared in their room to destroy them. If not because I was there to intervene. I didn't go to their house, but they just shout and call me on phone. I order, even I was not even there in the room, I order that spirit to get out from the place. And immediately it disappeared. God, Jesus has given the Son of God the power over them. They are the only one who can bring peace by destroying these powers, killing some, and casting them away. If you see them operating in countries and regions and communities, and they have become a threat to even security, to people's life, it's simply because sons of God there lack knowledge and understanding. They have been deceived. There are sons of God everywhere because if you go to every region, there are a whole lot of people who believe that Jesus is Christ, the Son of the Living God. But they are ignorant. They have been deceived by these same people in the churches. They've deceived them, that telling them that unless you pay this money, unless you obey this commandment, you cannot become this. So they have accepted this kind of knowledge in them. So they thought they are nothing. They are hopeless. They are powerless. You see them crying, praying psalms, trying to obey ten commandments of Moses, trying to pay tithes, so she do this. So they have made them useless. And Apostle Paul, who was once a Pharisee, taught in Galatians 5 verse 4 that Christ become of no effect to any one of you who just felt so by the law. You just felt so by tithe, by ten commandments, by not knowing about this thing, but you fall from the grace. You become useless. He said in verse 8 and 9 that this persuasion is not from the one who called you. Very little destroy the whole lamp. So that is why this people become useless. They cry, mention the name of Jesus, nothing is happening. And they don't even know how to operate. Those who are even knowledgeable don't know how to pray. Jesus, the word of God in Philippians chapter 2 from verse 10 to 12 says, 10 to 11 says, at the name of Jesus, you, because not Jesus, because you are using somebody's name, the person cannot do that by himself. So the sons of God who have the name of Jesus, because you are a son of God, because you believe in the name of Jesus. 
John chapter 1 verse 12. As many have received and give the power to become the sons of God, even those who believe in his name. So you believe in Jesus and believe in his name. And at the name of Jesus, Philippians 2, 10 and 11 is saying, Every knee in heaven on earth and under the earth should bow, and every tongue should confess that Jesus is the authority that you can command in the name of Jesus. Every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, the glory of the Father. So you have to understand that when you are dealing with the territory, there are the realms above, then on the ground, and then under the earth. You need to cast all these things that occupy these realms down. All these, the things that occupy these realms, you need to deal with them and cast them down. So you have to know where you are operating. You are operating up on that higher above the realm. You are operating on the ground. It's not a man who's working on the ground alone, but there's a cover on the atmosphere on that realm. So first of all, you begin from the realm above, because Apostle Paul was saying that you are not dealing with flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this, and spiritual wickedness in high places in that realm. Then he said, take the sword, the spirit, the word of God, and pray all kind of prayer. The constant the prayers will be casting down, some will be rebuking, some will be casting out, some will be slaying, some will be, re, will be destroying. So it's all round. Ephesians 6, verse 12, 17, and 18. Now, another realm, what I want you to understand is the realm of finances. You see, these occult people can even cause people to inherit divine money. They just do some incantations and rituals for them and they become very rich and mighty. Most of the money that are acquired in this world is through this divine means. So why should you be poor when you are a son of God? You can also conjure that divine money. So try to work on that. But the point here is not about the money. So don't concentrate even too much on money. I'm not saying don't concentrate on this. I say too much about that. Why? Because most of the reason why, most reason why there is the poverty in the life of this son of God is that they, these occult and devilish people are thieves. The Lord described them that they come to stay, kill and destroy. So if you are not destroying them over the communities and nations and the homes and everywhere, no matter how much you can command to come to your hand, they will steal them. Because if you will stay in a community where they are armed robbers and thieves, you see, the point is not even the wealth you are making. It's how to protect that wealth. So that is why Jesus said, first, when you believe, you cast out the devils, take up the serpents. So that's very important. So casting out the devil should be destroying them, straining them, and cast them away will be your first target. Not even the money. But you don't have to be poor because you can conjure money. Now, we see these sons of God. Don't lack the knowledge of them. You are a very terrible guy. You are more terrible than awkward. You are more frightening. You should be more. People should even, these satanic spirits are even afraid of you because you can destroy them. Know that. So when you are walking, don't be intimidated. Don't feel intimidated, frightening, or be afraid, disappointed, and despair. In anything, don't be disputing and murmuring and even angry at God and asking questions. No, you are that great person. Imagine that you are the son of God like Jesus Christ, who is the Lord. Well, when he came into the earth, we didn't see how powerful he is because he came as a lamp to just save us. But the Lord is so terrible. It's very terrible. And that's exactly who you are. God is looking up to you, who the son of God, man or woman. To bring all things under the feet of Christ. Because when you become the son of God, you and Christ have become the same. You have become the firstborn as him. You are in the church of the firstborn. You have his body. You have his power. The apostle Paul said in Philippians 4 verse 13, I can do 
all things to Christ who strengthened me. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things. Just as the occult man can do all things by the spirit of Satan and demons in them, so can you also do all things by the spirit of Christ who is in you. It's not by your strength, but it's by the spirit of the Christ who dwells inside you. You are the son of God. Why? Because you have the spirit of Christ. As many as receive him, he gives them that power to have his life. The life of the son of God. So that's what you are. Don't be confused in your mind. And don't doubt this in your mind. Believe in your mind that everything I say, because I say it, it must happen. Because that's what you are. By your mouth, you change things. By your mouth, you destroy. By your mouth, you build. The sword is in your mouth. The rod is in your mouth. And you have seven spirits. You, you have seven spirits. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and mind, the spirit of the knowledge of God, and the spirit of the fear of God. As I describe you in Isaiah chapter 11 from verse 1 to 9, what you are going to do to destroy, to kill, to strain, to bring absolute peace on earth that even terrible animals cannot even destroy again to become tame and even eating glass not fresh again why because you are so terrible and no demon spirit or power can overcome if your little children have overcome this satanic demon antichrist and false prophet spirits what about the great men among them the least the kingdom of God is greater than anyone born by the woman. What about the great ones among them? So you are not so mean like that. You are not just a useless person like that. You are not just a hopeless person. You are not just a powerless person like that. So they have tamed you. It's just like somebody who's brought an eagle to the house and trained the eagle among the cockle. So the eagle look at itself as if it's a cockle. But you are not. Or you train a leopard, a tiger, a lion among sheep and goats for him to believe that he is a sheep and goat. You are not a sheep and goat. No, you are a lion. You are a leopard. You are a tiger. You are an eagle. Think about this this way. The doctrines they teach you in the church is that the pastors will come and make themselves big, miracle workers, deliverers, prophets. It's what is taming your mind. So you think they are greatest. They are not the greatest. You are the greater one than them. Those who are deceiving you. If, if even they are good, if even your teachers are good, if even your preachers are the good one from God, the students are the best ones. They're better than their teachers. In Psalms, it said, I'm better than my teacher. I know more than even Asian people. Because a teacher teaches a student to become a president when he's still a teacher. So the students should better. So Jesus said, go into the world and preach the gospel to them. Those who believe, they will cast out the devils. Those who believe what you are preaching, not the preachers. And Apostle Paul said, all the five ministries were sent to perfect you so that you become, you will receive the stature of the Son of God and no more be a child. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 14. So the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors were sent to make you the son of God. They, not today, you. So you have the power in your hand. So don't let the pastors and apostles you have today deceive you and cause you to even give all your money to them and think that they are the one to deliver you. And they are the one to cause you to receive the inheritance of God. And what they are teaching you are mostly rubbish things that are taming your mind to become a useless and hopeless person. So try to look at who you are, what you are, and what you can do. So when you are walking the surface of this earth, know that you are a power. As an awkward man will not brag, but if you tempt him or her, he or she will deal with you, so you are greater and mightier than that. And when you think like that, you will see that the power of God is really working. And working in you and by you. 
you see because you are the son of God in place of Jesus. Jesus said, anyone who believes in me, the worst I do, it can also do it greater than that can do because I'm going to the Father. So you are in charge now. And unless you bring all things under the feet of Christ and bring peace, absolute peace on earth, Christ cannot return because God has said to him, sit here on my right hand here and make all your enemies your fools too. And those who are making the enemies fools too are you. That's why you are giving the name of Jesus to bring all things on, on earth, uh, uh, under heaven and earth, under the earth, there so that everyone confess that Jesus Christ is the glory of the Father. So Apostle Paul said in that Philippians chapter 2 from verse 10 to 13, whether I'm there or not, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for God is working in you to do his will and his pressure. And when he continued to verse 16, he said, so that you will not become blameless and harm. Um, blameless, harmless, and then not bookable in the world who find ourselves as sons of God. So take, think about it and work that salvation out without fear and trembling. As you become blame, blame you will be blamed, you will be harmed. Hate and you will be rebuked by who? God. Because you fail. May God bless you.